What's up guys, it's Alda Anthony, and welcome back to the Civic Vlog that you hopefully know and hopefully love. And in today's video, we are wrapping up part three of the ultimate exterior detail on my Honda Civic. Let's go. I'm just calling to say I... Alright guys and welcome back to part 3 of the ultimate exterior detail on my Honda Civic. I am so excited to have you all here, I am so excited to see how good this paint and how much better it's going to look once we polish it and coat it. So today's video is going to be all about polishing the car with a machine as well as ceramic coating it with G-Technics, CSL, and XO. I think this car is going to look absolutely phenomenal once we're done and add a ton of gloss as well as a lot of protection on this 20 year old paint. Now if you guys haven't checked out part one and part two of this detail series, please go back and watch those because in part one I explain all the products, tools, and techniques that I'm using within this detail series and part two is going to be the wash, the chemical decon, the mechanical decon via clay, the doctor colored chip repair, as well as some wet sanding. There is a ton of stuff in that video that you guys need to see before watching this one so you know why I had to do all that before we get to the fun stuff. So today's video is going to be pretty jam-packed full of polishing. I'm going to be doing a two-step polish, meaning I'm going to be taking a more abrasive pad, a wool pad with a compound and refining the paint and then going back through with a polish and a foam pad to basically finish it out and really jewel out this to the best of my abilities. From there, we're going to be paint prepping the entire vehicle and then going through with G-Technic's Crystal Serum Light as well as two coats of G-Technic XO to really add a lot of slickness, create hydrophobic effects, a lot of freaking gloss, and... Yeah, I, I don't think there's anything else to say. I think that's I think that should be winning you guys over at this point. So I'm really excited. There's a lot of work to be done. I'm gonna be pretty much doing this all day long. As you can see, I have the car in the air to make everything easier for me to polish because I'm polishing pretty much every single square inch of this vehicle and I have all the tools to do so. So without further ado, we need to get started. All right guys, so I got all my garage lighting set up as well as my little handheld light so I can reference all the swirls and scratches that I'm gonna try to be removing today. Um, but I'm not gonna bring you along for the entire freaking car with every single step because that's gonna make it a very, very long video. I wanna show you a good example here on the hood because I'm gonna be applying that same technique to the rest of the vehicle. But when I do change up my machine here down the road, I will show you why I'm changing up the machine uh, and talk about the Rupes hybrid as well as the little porter cable that I have. But I'm gonna be starting with the LHR 15 Mark II from Rupes as well as the wool pad and the last cut compound. After I finish with that, I'm gonna be switching to the uh, Rupes yellow foam pad and hyper polish and then that's gonna be the refining step and so I'm gonna see what kind of correction we can get and I guarantee you I will be able to remove these swirls um, but it should be pretty fun and like I said I don't want to bore you guys to death I want to make this fun and a little bit educational but I also have a ton of work to do so I have to get started so I'm gonna throw on the GoPro bring you guys along set the camera up over there and enjoy all right guys so we're ready to get started here I got the Rupes here as well as my wool pads so we're gonna go ahead and place this on the machine now, for anybody that doesn't know anything about polishing machines, right, this is all, it's called hook and loop. It's basically just a Velcro. So that's how the pad sticks to this backing plate here. And so once it's on, that's how it works. So um, I have some residual lint with it. When it comes to a new wool pad, you wanna make sure you get all that. So what I take, like to do is take my hand, just apply a little pressure. And there we go. So now taking my compound here, this is the last cut my favorite compound man this stuff's just amazing because it doesn't stain trim has a really long working time it doesn't like gunk up and it's just really easy to remove so for this stuff I'm gonna apply quite a bit to my pad and then I'm gonna take my finger here and start spreading it in and so that's gonna make sure that all the fibers of the wool are covered and that I don't have any like dry drag so basically the, the machine could start to skip or it could start to really mar the surface if all the fibers aren't coated in some type of compound. So this is just kind of priming the pad is what, it, is what it's called. And so make sure everything is covered. And this wool, what's nice about it is that it has really good cutting ability, meaning it'll cut through a lot of good defects, um, but it also just doesn't build up a ton of heat. It keeps things really cool on the surface, which is a good thing because you don't want your paint to get super hot when you're polishing. So 
that looks pretty good to me, man. So now for my removal of the compound, I'm gonna be using the Creature Edgeless from the Rag Company and 7030 blend, I explained that before. It's just a really good polishing and, and compounding towel. So I'm gonna shoot for this area right over here. I'm gonna get this camera turned on so you guys can watch. So this area, you can use that light kind of as a reference here. Now there are some deeper scratches in this car that I am just not gonna be able to get out. There's no point in chasing them. I mean, if I were to wet sand them, maybe, but guys, there's not much clear coat on this car. So that's the other big thing is that when you're polishing, you need to determine what's it worth to have less clear coat and potentially have clear coat failure versus having a couple imperfections, but overall having pretty glossy paint. So that's kind of a question you have to ask yourself, what's it worth? Otherwise you're gonna be going down and getting the thing resprayed. So anyway, I'm gonna be starting at a speed of probably two and a half just to get the pad primed on the surface, throw my cord over my shoulder. I'm gonna be aiming for about right here. So at this point, I'm looking at my pad. I'm seeing, okay, where do I have dry spots? I have a dry spot here, I have a dry spot there. So I'm gonna take a little bit more compound, go over there, because you can see, right, when I was polishing, it wasn't like perfectly smooth. It wasn't like spinning freely like a foam pad would. This has more grab to it, right, because it's gonna be doing more cutting. So I just have to kind of be careful there. That's much better. Now, you'll notice that the motion that I'm going in, I'm going up, down, up, down, left, right, left, right. I'm doing basically a cross-hatching method where I'm getting even coverage on all areas and my arm speed is pretty quick. It's not, I mean, it's not quick, but it's about a medium arm speed as I'm running at about a, a three and a half setting. So at this point, that's where I kind of feel comfortable. I think it feels pretty good on the paint, um, but I'm gonna do a quick little removal, just do a little check just to see how that looked uh, and then we'll keep going. All right, so I just did another pass with the wool pad and it's looking really good. That's actually exactly what I'm looking for. So basically the wool pad is going to leave micro marring, right? Because it's more abrasive. Think like, like again, like sanding, right? It's gonna leave some sanding marks, right? So once we see those little kind of micro swirls, we know we're on the right track and that's when we're gonna switch pads to a foam pad and then the foam pad is gonna refine those and remove all of that. And so. I'm gonna switch the pad really quick, just as my test spot, just to see how it turns out. Uh, and I think that that should be our go-to method for the entire car. All right, so now we're gonna switch to the hyper polish that I have in this little bottle. Typically, like I said, it comes in a spray bottle. I mentioned that in the, in the first video, um, but I broke that one. So I'm just been using this as just kind of like my little, I don't know, my little extra bottle. So um, putting on my hyper polish here with Rupa's foam yellow pad, we're gonna come to that same area and my pad's a little wet because I just cleaned it, but we're gonna go at about a speed, probably two and a half just to start things up because I'm probably gonna get some water fling and work it up to about a speed of four. clean up some of this excess water. So the beauty of a pad washer is it keeps your pads nice and clean. The downside is that if you don't spin them out all the way, you'll get some extra runoff there. All right, take our light here. Put it over the area. Oh, dude, yeah. That's what we're looking for. That's definitely what we're looking for. That looks fantastic. So that is going to be the plan for the entire vehicle there. And so you can see a little bit of some dots and things like that. That's just normal, that's just normal solvent pop. That's just normal, normal clear coat. That's how it looks when you start polishing it, but um, yeah, that's some good clarity, guys. I mean, hoping you can pick that up on camera, but that's exactly what I'm looking for. So, give you a reference here if you can pick this up on the GoPro. Coming up over here, 
You can see all the swirls and everything like that, even down here where I haven't gotten to. Over here, definitely see all that. And coming over to here, we have a perfect, it's perfect clarity, right, on that, on that light. And that's what we're using as our reference. And so, yep, that's the plan, guys. So I'm gonna knock this out pretty much on the entire car. So everything from here is gonna be a montage on all the, on, on the bigger machine. And then once I switch to the smaller machine, I'll start talking about that again. But uh, yeah, enjoy. All right, guys, wanted to give you a quick update. So I just finished with the roof. I did both the compounding and polishing on the roof just because uh, I'm not gonna be touching that area again. I'm gonna be using other machines where it's not gonna overlap. Um, but when I polish a car, I like to piece things out, right? So when I look at it, it's kind of like a, a Tetris puzzle. I try to figure out which machine can I fit into a certain area on a car uh, that's gonna be comfortable, that's also going to work extremely well. So for example, with the LHR 15 Mark II, the Rupes machine, the big one, I'm using that on all the bigger flat panels so the doors the hood I'll use it on the fenders the rear quarters uh, the roof things like that and then I'll knock down to the three inch machine which is the porter cable and I'll use that on like the side skirts the bumpers uh, the spoiler uh, the trunk things like that and so uh, and then with the smallest machine the Rupes hybrid little one inch uh, I'll usually use that for intricate areas maybe an area that I can't get to or maybe like an example would have been um, on those plugs there for the windshield wiper fluid uh, as of right now I'm gonna be moving on to the sides of the car so I'm actually going to start with the 15 inch machine and run through the quarters run through the fenders I have to polish out the wet sanding that I did there on the door and I'll polish that out as well then run into the fenders uh, one thing I want to point out is that I want to remove the spoiler, right? I want to do that, but the thing is, is I hardwired everything and I heat shrinked uh, the wiring for the LED third brake light uh, on the spoiler into the tail. So removing that, it's gonna be a pain because I'm gonna have to cut it, I'm gonna have to reheat uh, re shrink those and I don't really wanna have to deal with it. So I'm just gonna fit my machines into those areas the best I can and call it good. So, um, but other than that, I'm pretty much polishing everything. The tail lights are getting polished, um, the rear, uh, license plate frame cover thing, whatever the heck you wanna call it, that's gonna get polished. Uh, the only thing I'm not gonna be polishing is gonna be the headlights because you guys saw my previous uh, video where I actually uh, refinished the headlights and had them wrapped in PPF, so I don't need to even touch those. Those are absolutely perfect. So uh, that's kind of the plan so far. So we're gonna knock out the sides, uh, then work our way down to the smaller machines and then the even smallest machine. So let's get at it. Hi guys, I wanna bring in on a little secret here for these side moldings. So it's really hard to get a polisher within these side areas. But another easy trick that you can do with just stuff that you typically have at home uh, is Q-tips. I have a little cap here from one of my little water jugs uh, and a little bit of polish. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my polish down in this little cap. And then from there, I'm gonna take just one of these Q-tips. I'm just gonna kinda of roll it around in this polish. And then from there, make, make sure this is clean first, obviously. And then from there, you are going to run the Q-tip and polish out any residual crap that you have in there. So whether it's like hard water, maybe it's just old dirty paint. And you can just take this through, flip it over, and I have plenty of Q-tips on hand too. Um, and then just run this along. I mean, you could do this around the whole entire thing, and this will literally make that whole edge look brand new again. Dude, so I was sitting on my Harbor Freight stool here, and freaking wheel just fell off. And I mean, not just like fell, it snapped, so I can't put it back on, which totally sucks, but kind of is what it is. 
Um, so really quick, what I'm doing for this is I'm actually gonna be doing a two-step on the trim and all that, but I don't need to cut it with anything super strong. So I'm gonna do an orange pad with my compound on it. And from there, I'm gonna jump to my little green pad there, which is gonna be more of a finishing pad with the polish. So basically uh, a firmer foam for the compound, a lighter foam for the, uh, for the polish. All right guys, so quick update so far. Everything's going good. Um, roof of the car is done, pillars are done, everything's finished out as it should. Uh, mirrors are done as well. Um, so I still need to hit the side panels with the polish. I still need to hit the hood with the polish. Um, but like I said, I like to just kind of save that for last. There's, there's a method to my badness. But what I'm gonna do from here is take the hybrid, knock out the grill, knock out the front bumper with a three inch machine. And then from there, this is the only thing I'm kind of having an issue with is gonna be back here on this trunk. I wish I wouldn't have hardwired in that spoiler because otherwise I'd just remove the spoiler, but because it's hardwired, I need essentially somebody to hold it while I polish and I don't have anybody here. It's just be my myself. So I don't know what I'm gonna do for that. I'm probably gonna fit the Rupas inside this area with the, the five inch backing plate and then see if I can switch this to the two inch, uh, the two inch backing plate on the hybrid here and fit that underneath the spoiler. And so anyways, knock this out, knock out the front bumper and we should be uh, moving along. All right guys, so quick update so far. I just finished with the top of the trunk uh, as well as the top of the spoiler and the underside of the spoiler. That was a little time consuming, but uh, here we are. So now I'm gonna do the back of the trunk now and focus a lot on this uh, little tray here for the license plate because that thing's pretty, uh, pretty hammered. From there, uh, rear bumper with the LHR15, the Rupes. Uh, knock that out since it's big enough. And then I'm gonna zip through the side skirts with this little guy. And then from there, I'm just gonna kind of jewel out the sides. I'm gonna kind of finesse the sides one more time, uh, mainly for the fact that that resprayed door had a super hard clear coat. Uh, so when I wet sanded it, I had to spend a little bit more time on it. So I really wanna refine that. So hit that with the yellow pad and the polish along the sides. And at that point, I mean, we're done. So I'm just gonna basically prep the car for the coating at that point. Um, and then from there, we're coating and then curing and then coating and then curing and then we'll be done.
All right, guys, side skirt time. Now, I personally like to polish side skirts just laying on the ground. That's how I've always done it, and I don't mind it. I just kind of get comfortable, prop myself up, start buzzing, and yeah. So surprisingly, these side skirts have held up freaking fantastic since I painted them. Uh, I think it's that 2K clear, man. It's like it's like a magic clear coat. <laughs> Seriously. I don't know. I mean, this shit's so hard that it just holds up. I mean, it's been years now, and they still look fantastic. So I'm just going to buzz them down really quick and then knock out the sides. <laughs> Right when I needed you most. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Perfect. 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 All right guys, so we're still moving along. Dane just took off. He actually helped me hold the camera for a while. So Dane, if you're watching this, thank you very much. Um, but now we're moving on to the Truth Serum. So this stuff right here, panel wipe, hands down one of the strongest paint preps uh, on the market, seriously. So I don't know what's in this stuff, man, but if you're ever using a compound or a polish that has fillers, this will expose that, right? So if you're using anything that's filling in scratches rather than correcting them, this will show you that you've filled them in and you have not corrected them. So this stuff is super, super strong, uh, but it's necessary because basically this is your, your prep spray so the coating really sticks to the paint. So you wanna make sure you do a really good job of polishing before that happens. Now I'm gonna show you guys just a quick little example here. So taking my towel, I'm gonna do a couple sprays into the towel. You don't need a whole lot here and grabbing my light. So I don't know if you guys can pick that up on camera at this angle, right? This particular area is pretty swirl free. I would say it looks pretty good. Uh, take my little panel wipe. I'm gonna wipe over that area, spread that in, flip my towel, and if it looks the same, You've done something right. That's exactly what we're looking for. So um, fortunately, the whole car is actually looking like that. I'm really, really happy. So uh, most of the swirls, most of the scratches uh, actually have come out surprisingly. And so, however, there's still tons of imperfections. I mean, there's still tons of countless dents and other deep scratches that I can't remove, but hey, it is what it is. I think this car still looks great for, uh, for what it is. So anyways, I'm gonna continue panel wiping. I'll bring you along for a couple of shots, just showing you the process. And then from there, We'll be almost to the coating step, so let's get after it. All right, guys, I wanted to bring you along for a little bit of the trim coating here. So uh, I'm not gonna show you all of the coating of the trim, but I just wanna show you a couple, a couple examples here. So uh, a little bit of C4 here. I'm gonna go over just the darker black pieces. That's all I'm hitting. And what this is gonna do, it's gonna deepen the look and it's also going to coat it. And the rest of the trim I'm gonna hit on the car is actually just gonna be around, um, probably around the windows. There's not a whole lot of trim on this. And that's just going to darken it, protect that area. I mean, you can coat over any of the trim with CSL. Uh, I can even coat over this with CSL. It just 
The C4, I feel like it does just a better job and darkens it a little bit more. All right, guys, so unboxing Crystal Serum Light, this is what you get in the box. Uh, so I have the big bottle. So this is enough to do several cars. I mean, maybe even more than that. And so uh, you're gonna have your coating here. You're gonna have your little pipette. It does come with gloves and it does come with an applicator. And so uh, I'm actually not going to use their applicator. I think their applicator is just fine, but I have a different microfiber applicator that I wanna use uh, and test out. And so I'm gonna try that out, put on these gloves. You definitely wanna wear gloves. I still need to go to the store and buy more, um, more nitrile, nitrile gloves, is that what you call them? Black, black nitrile gloves. I still need to buy more of those, but these will do for right now. These look odd, but they're gonna do the job. All right, so for this, normally I wear a headlamp, but since I have the GoPro on, I can't, I can't make that happen. Uh, so I'm just gonna show you a quick example really quick, um, and then from there, you won't, you won't have lighting to reference like I will, but you, you'll still get the point. All right, so we're gonna apply it right here. I got enough coating on the on the applicator for anybody referencing. I just I just do I don't know a couple different layers of drops. So I go through and do I don't know 10, 15 drops uh, to where it's I got a, a good saturated area. So then I take the applicator, start gliding it across, and it kind of starts leaving like a little bit of a snail trail. Make sure you get even coverage. So you can cross hatch if you want to do it like this. This is an easy thing to do. Go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Um, and then from there, that area is coated, right? So set our applicator down, a nice safe spot. Um, let's just pretend that it's fast forwarded, you know, a couple minutes. We're gonna take down our first towel and we're gonna start knocking this down and it will be nice and slick. Now the idea of two towels is you just don't wanna have any high spots because when a ceramic coating dries, it dries above the surface. And so you wanna make sure it's level so you don't have any weird looking, like you know, like, like somebody give you like a really bad clear coat job. And so knocking it down with the first towel, take our second towel, come back through, and it just glides smoothly across. And it's slick as freaking butter, man. So that's the process, that's the plan. Now you guys know how it's done. Um, let's get after it. All right, guys, so I got the camera on a tripod here. I'm gonna apply a, a bit of EXO to show you how EXO is applied. So it kind of looks like this right here. Um, and this is the bigger bottle, and then you have more applicator pads like that. So EXO is supposed to be applied about one to two hours after you apply CSL. Um, I'm guessing it's been roughly an hour and a half since I finished with the hood. So, you know, probably coming up on two hours. Um, so at this point, I'm good to go. I can apply it. Uh, now, EXO should be applied with two coats. So basically, the second you finish with one coat, you're gonna come back over and start it again. Or you can wait an hour or two hours, however you wanna do it. But um, basically, you're supposed to apply two coats of EXO to get the most out of it. And so, uh, what's nice, EXO is easier to apply than, than CSL, and CSL is already easy. Uh, EXO is much faster. So if you ever do the uh, CSL in your car and maybe you're struggling or you think it's taking too long, EXO goes so much faster, um, but you definitely want that CSL as a, as a base coat because that's what's gonna give you all the longevity. So uh, I'm gonna show you a quick example here and then I'm gonna knock out the rest of the car. Now 
from here, you're gonna give it, I don't know, a couple minutes. You can give it a minute, two minutes, whatever you wanna do. It has a long working time. So unlike, so CSL has a pretty long working time. This has an even longer working time. So you can actually just let this sit. It doesn't really get high spots. It doesn't really have a high spot issue. Um, but just for the sake of the video, I'm just gonna knock it down, show you, do this stuff, wipes off. It just wipes off, it wipes off like butter, man. It's, I know I keep saying that, but it's just super, super freaking slick. That's how you apply XO. So, um, I wish I could have, you know, another five hours of B-roll of me doing every single little thing on this car, but I don't even know how, how long this video is right now. It could be, it could be crazy long, so. Um, anyways, I'm just gonna knock this out. Next thing you know, the car is gonna be completely done. It's gonna be beautiful. Um, I'm gonna pull it out on a nice sunny day and, and hopefully it looks awesome. So, all right guys, I'm gonna get to this and I will catch you in a little bit. All right guys, it has been one hell of a day, but my car is officially coated with G-Technic CSL and topped with XO and it looks amazing. It looks exactly how I wanted it to look, if not better. It really did turn out phenomenal and so I'm super happy with how it looks and detailing is a ton of work guys it really is I mean especially when you go to this level of polishing correcting coating and all of that and even the extra stuff that I threw into this series um, it's just a ton of work especially for a couple days and so I'm really happy with how everything turned out I am not putting the wheels on tonight I don't even want to think about doing that right now it's like one o'clock in the morning on a Sunday night and I have to go to work tomorrow so tomorrow after work I'm gonna get the wheels on we're gonna roll this thing outside really show it off so you guys can see how good the car looks but yeah I'm I'm so happy I'm so pleased with how this looks so anyways guys thanks for watching See you tomorrow. All right, guys, it is a beautiful morning and the sun is already glistening off my freshly polished and coated Honda Civic. I woke up extra early this morning to get the front and rear mud guards back on the car, as well as the wheels back on and back on the ground. I got the rear license plate on as well, and this thing looks nutty. This thing just looks insane, and I can't wait to pull it out there to show you how good this looks in direct sunlight. So let's go ahead and pull this thing out and show you the aftershots. <music> guys and that is a wrap the Civic is officially polished it is coated and I really hope you enjoyed those aftershots there I want to give a huge shout out to Jimmy aka JW media for shooting that small cinematic for me and also great Dane films aka Dane for coming to help out and hold the camera and all of that because this really was a lot of work I kind of forget how much work it is to make a detailing video when it comes to polishing and it comes to camera angles and all that stuff and it really is a ton of work uh, physical work and camera work and then editing this video is also going to be quite some work as well but I hope you guys enjoyed this entire detailing series everything from part one part two and part three here uh, because I did put a lot of work into it I did put a lot of time into it but obviously it all worked out the Civic looks freaking amazing so as usual guys if you guys like this video make sure you give me a big thumbs up subscribe down below for more I'll catch you guys in the next one Salt Anthony